观众朋友，大家好，欢迎收看今天的中华电视网的特别节目《新西兰总理 Bill English 专访》。Welcome, Prime Minister. 你好。Wow, that's in Chinese. Great. Yes. So, Prime Minister, National has been in the government since 2008 for three terms. So, what is the significance of winning the, this year's elections for the fourth term? We're not focused on winning for the fourth term. We're more focused on having the right kind of government to build on New Zealand's success、uh, over the next four or five years. Now, it happens we've learnt a lot. We have a very experienced government,、uh, but we want、uh, we, we New Zealanders want to see more opportunities, more jobs, more investment in infrastructure.、Uh, that's our focus in this election campaign. Okay, great. So, what are the, the highlights of the national government has achieved? Uh, for the past three years, one of our biggest achievements, I think, is getting the investment in roads and、uh, housing development moving faster, because we've got a growing population, a growing economy, and we want to invest to support that growth.、Uh, we've also been able to, with recent announcements, announcements, spread the benefits of that growth across the community. So, on the first of April next year, all our families will have lower taxes. And the ones with high housing costs get more support.、And、we've also worked hard to improve our health and education by setting targets and pushing the public service to achieve them. Whether it's more children passing, more students passing their exams, or people、mm. uh, having shorter waiting time at the emergency department at the hospital. Sure. And you are in the position since last December. So tell us about your feeling in this position as the Prime Minister for New Zealand. Look, I've really enjoyed it. I get to see so much of this wonderful country, so many people who are really committed to creating a, a successful future.、Uh, also, some of the harder problems、mm. about which、uh, I think we're best to be straight up about our social problems, about crime, about the drugs,、uh, so that we can get better solutions to those problems. But it's a great privilege, and I've really enjoyed it. Yes, since you are the prime minister, WTV very lucky had you with the Chinese community celebrating the Chinese New Year early this year, and、uh, uh, it's in Manukau. So tell us more about your engagement with the Chinese community, and、uh, have you learned more Chinese? Well, I'm, I'm picking up the odd word here and there. <laughs> it's、uh, look, the, I enjoy the engagement with the Chinese community because it's quite large now. Yes. And doing so involved in so many things from education to media, you know, even in horse racing. That's right.、Uh, and all sorts of businesses. And I'm finding now, as I go and visit、um, sort of Kiwi-owned businesses, often、mm. you'll find they've got Chinese partners who、yes. are there, and particularly impressed by the young people. And the way that they're they've、uh, got the skills to、mm. work between New Zealand and China to work in both languages,、uh, skills that I envy. Oh, great! So after you launching your personal WeChat in March, you remember this year, and、uh, you have posted 19 updates. I count it every time. I will read it every time. So how many social medias you are engaging with? And、uh, tell us more about your engagement with the on WeChat. Well, it's part of our broader social media approach、mm. because everyone's on it, and of course you don't have to spend long in the Chinese community to realise how important WeChat is,、mm. uh, not just for keeping in touch but for doing business.、Yeah. And so,、uh, along with、uh, our MP Zhang, we、mm. uh, make sure that we're part of the WeChat. And what's important with、uh, the social media is listen to the feedback,、mm. and it's a great、yeah. way to get the feedback because. The views of the community aren't always in the news or in the, on the TV or in the newspaper, but on WeChat there's an awful lot of discussion.、Yeah. And、uh, I have my own WeChat, which I use for personal communication with Chinese friends of mine. Yes.、Um, in English, of course,、uh, and、uh, it's just such a useful tool.、Uh, you, you not only just have to use it, but it's a great opportunity to get the feedback. Yes. And how about the other social medias? You are also active in the Facebook, yes, and Instagram,、yep. and with Twitter. That's right. <laughs> most active on most active on Facebook, yeah. And、uh, we use it as a, a, it's a way partly of expressing some of the more personal aspects or behind、mm. the scenes、mm. aspects of the of the job, but also for getting policy out there because I found、uh, most people are interested in policy that affects them directly, and、mm. Facebook's a great way for them to hear about it. Sure. And what have you found the most concerned issues in the Chinese community after you engaging with the Chinese community more? 
a oh, strong focus on law and order, mm. and in fact, I would say the what one the the feedback from the Chinese community and others uh, was behind our decision earlier this year to significantly increase police numbers, yep. and also for the uh, encouraging the police to be uh, to interact more with the owners of the smaller businesses uh, who were at you know have been suffering from these uh, robberies, which have been very upsetting to mm. people. So <coughs> that uh, those new police are just starting to come into the system now. Yeah. So it'll lift by about a thousand over the next two or three years. Sure, I have the figures. So according to the WTV transport in May, showed the that the safety issues is one of the one of the issues concerned by the Chinese community. Forty two point nine percent of Chinese was unhappy with the law and order. But in May budget government uh, just announced a put 785.6 million dollars of capital funding in law and order, including 1,122 more staff, police staff, and 98 percent of burglaries will be attended in 48 hours. So we want to see more, and uh, we want to know what does the government do to make the community more safer. Well, as these, as the police. Uh, roll out more more visible in the community. Uh, we've also put money into some other things besides the police. For instance, the police helicopter in Auckland now runs 24 hours a day instead mm. of stopping in the early morning, uh, which apparently the criminals figured out and mm. they, could, they were doing more crime in that time when the helicopter wasn't up there. And the police are changing the way they operate. So, for instance, we've spent a lot of money on uh, making, giving them good mobility tools on yeah. their phones mm. and this has made them about 10 or 15 percent more efficient mm. so when they go to an incident they can deal with the requirements there for evidence for the court and so on they don't have to go off the street back to the police station to do mm. it and that effectively means a lot more police time yeah sure and the other issue the Chinese concern is the immigration, I think. And uh, the immigration policy has changed the minimum medium annual income to $41,000 for the essential skills work visa. <coughs> what can we expect the contribution from skilled migrant workers and the importing to the c economy and the business? Look, we are, I think, the only political party that is uh, positive about getting skilled people in to do the jobs that are needed to be done here in New Zealand and the investment. Uh, we want to remain open to migration and investment because that helps us be a more successful economy. Uh, other political parties want to close down the migration and the mm. investment. Uh, so we've got a set of rules which we think strike the right balance between getting the skills in that we need, making sure the New Zealanders who uh, could do the jobs uh, get the best opportunity to do those jobs. We put some proposals out earlier in the year, made some changes to those, mm. uh, but now the policy is settled. Uh, we have you know, still quite high rates of people coming into New Zealand and that reflects the faster growing economy. Uh, and everywhere I go around New Zealand, the businesses are looking for more people to mm. be able to do the jobs that are available. So in what situation the national government would change the immigration policy again, we said probably before or after election? What uh, the communities and families like to see is consistency uh, and predictable policy. So we have made we made some changes, and uh, that's where we want to leave it. We don't want to further change. We don't want to change the rules again mm. because that would create uncertainty. Sure. And what is the healthy net immigration number um, for <coughs> New Zealand, from your view as a prime minister? It's the, the the right number is the one that reflects the growth in the economy. So at the at the moment mm. the number is pretty high, mm. and that's because we have so much growth uh, and overseas people seeing New Zealand as a credible country that's got some growth and some energy and they want to be here. Now, um, as the, if the economy slowed, I think the migration would slow. Mm. Certainly, uh, we don't agree with numbers like 10 or 20,000. Uh, it would be very difficult to uh, for the other political parties to limit it to 10 or 20,000 without severe disruption mm. in the communities and in our businesses and investment. Mm, sure. 
因为时间关系, we have to, uh, because of the we have to take a break and then we will move on to the second part. So So Prime Minister. So again, according to the WTV Chase poll showed sixty nine point six percent of of respondents asked the government to intervene the house market. The property market usually moved in seven year cycle and now it's reaching a decade of good trading. So a recent figure from REINZ showed the median price in Auckland in June fell slightly zero point eight percent to eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So what is government going to do to make every single hardworking Kiwi to own a house? The most direct way we help them with that now is uh, with the Home Start Plan and around 29,000 first home buyers have taken it up and that so they're able to u access their KiwiSaver savings and then the government gives them a cash grant on top of that of, of 10 or 20,000 depending on whether it's an existing or a new house. So we've seen 29,000 uh, young couples mainly take up that option around New Zealand and we've got enough money there to support 90,000 of them. Uh, so that's a quite you know, a very large group of New Zealanders who with some assistance from the government will have a good opportunity to get in mm. to their own, buying their own home and in some parts of the country they, the, they can get a deposit from mm. their own KiwiSaver ca savings for a couple plus the government grant, that's enough to, mm. for them to be able to get into a house. In the long run, the most important thing is to get more houses on the ground and we've welcomed the uh, focus on property development from some of our new, uh, Chinese investors uh, because they are helping with that. They're out there creating new subdivisions, mm. uh, financing the building of large numbers of houses. And at the moment, we've got about as the, the largest house building program we've had for a long time, for 30 or 40 years, mm. and that will continue and the government's going to contribute uh, by uh, with its plan in Auckland to build 35,000 houses on the government-owned land mm. over the next 10 years, so the best the best opportunity for uh, New Zealanders who want to be able to buy their own home is to see more houses on the ground. Mm. Uh, the main decisions about that are made by the Auckland City Council, sure. so we work with them. And the government is providing money, a billion dollars we put up, to help them build the water pipes and the roads mm. that are needed for the new yeah, houses. The because the developers can only do so mm. much and the government is helping to fund the infrastructure so more houses can happen faster. Sure. And I think that uh, some of the Chinese communities are the first home buyers. I think that's the most concern for the home ownership by the young couple to have their own first home. First home. So, from your view, you have any advice for the first home buyers and what government is going to do? Well, for the first home buyers, the, uh, the 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 tool that's available to help them in the first place is Home Start, and I'd encourage them to go and find out about mm -hmm. how those rules work. Uh, then there's another uh, product called Welcome Home Loans, mm -hmm. and that's for the young buyers who have a lower deposit. Mm. who don't have much of their own money and in Auckland uh, mm. it is quite difficult to uh, yeah. get a deposit together so the welcome home loans can help them with that because it's a guarantee mm. uh, for the bank that to lend the money when the buyer has has lower a lower deposit uh, the market is changing which is I think uh, optimistic for or hopeful for our first home buyers because it was going up quickly, mm. uh, it's now flattened out some parts of the Auckland market, the prices are dropping and I think if people are a bit patient uh, then alongside their hard work that they do mm. to save money and often their families are involved in that, uh, then they'll have the opportunity to get into a home. Yes, and uh, we also see more and more Chinese candidates putting up their hands for this, e this year's election, at least seven in different political parties. So what, how do you think about that? And uh, how many Chinese MP uh, would be the best uh, representation of our community? Look, it's great to see the interest mm. uh, 
and if they, of course, if all seven got in, that would be you know, not too far off the proportionate representation mm. of, the, of the Chinese community. Because uh, it's an important part of becoming part of the, the, the democratic culture in New Zealand, yeah. mm. uh, seeing people participating. And I've been also impressed to see Chinese candidates standing in our local body elections mm, in different yeah, parts of the country, yes. uh, and successfully so. They're good at politics. They, yeah, they know are. how to get their supporters <laughs> going. They mm. uh, and uh, know how to put their case, and often mm. quite articulate. So I think it's it's a really positive development mm. for uh, for New Zealand. In, in a way, it's been it's been great to see it happen reasonably quickly. Mm. You know, our, in New Zealand, we grappled for a long time with having enough Maori and Pacific uh, mm. politicians. That took a long time to come yeah. right, but it is. And so our parliament is becoming more representative of the population mm. at large. And um, uh, we have an excellent Chinese MP in yeah. Zhang Yang. Uh, and we'd like to, of course, in the future to see more. And we did see a number of Chinese uh, put their hands up as yeah. part of our normal selection process. Mm. Well, they just have to be, like everyone else, be a bit persistent and they'll get there. Yes, you think how many MPs will be great <laughs> of Chinese candidates? Well, MPs? look, if it's you know, if as many as good. <laughs> seven or eight percent of the population, that's eight or ten MPs in mm. the parliament, and mm. I'm sure I'm sure it'll get to that. Mm. Uh, it, it's just a matter of time. Sure. So, Prime Minister, about the uh, coalition partners, so National has announced uh, uh, you are going to co your coalition partners with the ACT Party and the Uni United Futures. So also backing another deal with the Maori Party. So my question is, do you have any chance with the Opportunity Party if it's reached a five percent threshold of party votes and also with the uh, New Zealand First? Well, the, the, the voters will decide. Mm. So they uh, We'll wait till September the 23rd before we go, get into any detail about it. But what we, we have said that we prefer, our preference mm. would be to continue with the parties we work with, ACT, mm. UNITED and the Māori Party. Mm. We don't always agree mm. among ourselves, uh, but we have created a relationship of respect that means we've been able to provide consistent, predictable government mm. that, and good policies that have helped with the economy mm. uh, and provided good government uh, and and supported the growth mm. that's benefiting New Zealand. Mm. Now we want to continue that. So we want that sort of government in place mm. after September the 23rd, because that would be good for New Zealand. Mm. It would be good to have government that built on the success that we've enjoyed mm. and made more of it, so that more people had those opportunities. Now we think we could do that with our existing partners. Mm. The, as you can see, there's a lot of political action at the moment yeah. with parties sorting out who's their leader and who isn't and so on. Mm. Uh, and after September we'll start talking to them. Sure. And uh, the new party leader of the Labour Party, Justin Arden, so do you have any words to her? Look, she, she has a difficult job there because mm. the Labour Party has been a bit negative, they've been out of touch with New Zealand's success and just changing the leader isn't going to change their embedded long term attitude which is that you know they don't they can't cope with New Zealand being successful enough. So I wish her luck. Mm -hmm. uh, we always respect the leader of the opposition because they have the they may have the opportunity to form a government after an election. We're mm -hmm. focusing on getting our support up. I mean, National has enjoyed uh, good support through the last three elections, mm. but we need to get a good, strong vote on September the 23rd so that we're in a position to form a good, strong government. Sure, yes. And in terms of the vote, so just a, we would we love to ask you, as a Prime Minister of New Zealand, tell us, our audience, about how important of taking part of this year's elections? It's really important people actually get out and vote. You know, often I meet people who have quite strong opinions about politics and then you find out that they didn't actually vote mm. or they weren't sure how to do it or they thought it looked a bit complicated. In a way, it doesn't, regardless of your political views, it's important to vote. Mm. But of course, if you want to the success of the economy to continue, then getting out to vote and voting 
uh, for the National Party is mm. what's going to make sure that that, that occurs. But uh, having opinions and not voting is, is not particularly useful. Mm. Uh, and in our New Zealand elections are always close. Mm. Uh, a few hundred votes can make the difference oh, yes. to whether an MP gets in and that because we can only ever win by one or two seats, a few hundred votes can make the difference to who the government is mm. in this election. Sure. So it's so important if people have a strong opinion yes. or any opinion, they get out there and actually vote. And especially we have the MMP, so that's more important of every vote is counted. Yeah. Under MMP, every vote matters, particularly, yeah. and the one that matters the most is the party vote. So yeah. they go in, they get two votes, one for the party. The w vote for the party is the, one, the vote that determines who the government is. And you're best to just vote for the party you want, particularly mm. if it's national. <laughs> sure. And the other vote is for your local MP. Mm. And that doesn't determine who the government is, but of mm. course we support our MPs because they do a great job of representing their community. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, your time with us. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, for your time with us.